If we look at Sesame Workshop today, we see that Sesame Street is still a very popular program. It's uh, probably the number two or three rated children's programming now. Uh, it's come up in the ratings recently because we've changed the format and again become m more concerned about really making it appealing in the competitive landscape that we have. Uh, it is also the the offshoots of Sesame Street in terms of licensing provide a very important part of our revenue for the workshop as a whole. So keeping that vital and ongoing will be a main concern for as far as I can see. Now, <clears throat> we worry, everybody with a, with a long-running television show worries about whether or not it's going to get old. That is, Mickey Mouse isn't around the way it was in the early days of Disney, and not as popular anymore. And whether or not we can keep Sesame Street popular in the way we hope uh, is a challenge. We don't know. We hope so. We believe we will be able to, but that's a challenge. The, I think my personal view is that the impact of Sesame Street within the United States is not as great now as it was originally. There's more competition. Um, there is not the same general interest in education as the time that I talked about in the late 60s and early 70s. So I think currently we are having more of an impact internationally than we are in the United States. We have a number of co-productions that are, that is, productions based on the Sesame Street model, but with indigenous curriculum to the country involved, produced by the country that is showing the program, characters developed for that program within the country. We have programs like that in probably 17 other countries now, something like that. Uh, just to give an example, I've mentioned Egypt before, Israel, Rechov Samsam, a Palestin Palestinian, Jordanian, Israel, Israeli version that went on the air this year, uh, Takalani Sesame in South Africa. We have a program, a new program, a new Japanese production going on this year in Japan, and a number of others. I think those programs, particularly in countries like South Africa, Egypt, Palestine, Israel, um, we have a new Bangladesh production underway. We hope to have an Indian production underway, Chinese production. Those countries are much like we were in 69. There's no competition. The children don't have any educational program to watch. There is not the competitive landscape of media in most of those countries. In some, almost none. So I think the impact of the shows there is greater now. I think for the foreseeable future in countries like that, that's likely to be our greatest mission opportunity. Of course, if I say we're going to produce a program in Bangladesh, you undoubtedly will think, how are you going to get licensing revenue there? And the answer is, we're not. So the challenge for us in the future is how to develop sustaining revenue for shows in countries that cannot provide it themselves. South Africa is a country that can possibly provide sustaining revenues. It is a relatively wealthy country, but many of the other countries where we could have an impact are not wealthy. And how we do that in the long run, the initial program, or the initial two years, or maybe the initial three years, uh, yes, you can do that with the Agency for International Development, other international organizations, but it's very unclear to us what business model will allow that kind of programming to be carried on in the way it should be. So that, that is a big question in our future. It's the area where I think we can have the most impact. It's where we're putting a lot of resources and a lot of initiative. That's the direction we're going while at the same time trying to maintain the vitality of Sesame Street within the United States. I didn't mention Latin America, same thing.